St. Alphonsus, Chapter 6, Those Called to the Religious State, Continued. Consideration 7, The Damage Done to Religious by Tepidity. Consider the misery of that religious, who, after having left his home, his parents, and the world with all its pleasures, and after having given himself to Jesus Christ, consecrating to him his will and his liberty, exposes himself at last to the danger of being damned by falling into a lukewarm and negligent life and continuing therein. Oh no, not far from perdition is a lukewarm religious who has been called into the house of God to become a saint. God threatens to reject such and to abandon them if they do not amend. But because thou art lukewarm, I will begin to vomit thee out of my mouth. Apocalypse 3.16 St. Ignatius of Loyola, seeing a lay brother of his order become lukewarm in the service of God, called him one day and said to him, Tell me, my brother, why did you come to religion? He answered, To serve God. Oh, my brother, replied the saint, what have you said? If you had answered that you came to serve a cardinal or a prince of this earth, you would be more excusable. But you say that you came to serve God, and do you serve him thus? Father Nuremberg says that some are called by God to be saved only as saints, so that, if they should not take care to live as saints, thinking to be saved as imperfect Christians, they will not be saved at all. And St. Augustine says that such are in most cases abandoned by God. Negligent souls God is accustomed to abandon. And how does he abandon them? By permitting them from lighter faults, which they see and do not mind, to fall into grievous ones, and lose divine grace and their vocation. St. Teresa of Jesus saw the place prepared for her in hell had she not detached herself from an earthly, though not a grievously culpable affection. He that contemneth small things shall fall by little and little. Ecclesiasticus 19.1 Many wish to follow Jesus Christ, but from afar as St. Peter did, who, when his master was arrested in the garden, says St. Matthew, followed him afar off. Matthew 26.58 But by doing so, that will easily happen to them which happened to St. Peter, namely, that when the occasion came, he denied Jesus Christ. A lukewarm religious will be contented with what little he does for God. But God, who called him to a perfect life, will not be contented, and in punishment for his ingratitude will not only deprive him of his special favors, but will sometimes permit his fall. When you said, It is enough, then you perished. The fig tree of the gospel was cast into the fire only because it brought forth no fruit. Father Louis de Ponte said, I have committed many faults but I have never made peace with them. Miserable is that religious who, being called to perfection, makes peace with his defects. As long as we detest our imperfections, there is hope that we may still become saints. But when we commit faults and make little of them, then, says St. Bernard, the hope of becoming saints is lost. He who soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. 2 Corinthians 9.6 Common graces do not suffice to make one a saint. Extraordinary ones are necessary, but how will God be liberal with his favors towards the one that acts sparingly and with reserve in his love towards him? Moreover, to become a saint, one must have courage and strength to overcome all repugnances. And let no one ever believe, says St. Bernard, that he will be able to attain to perfection if he does not render himself singular among others in the practice of virtue. What is perfect cannot but be singular. Reflect, my brother, for what you left the world and all, to become a saint. But that lukewarm and imperfect life which you lead, is that the way of becoming a saint? St. Teresa animated her daughters by saying to them, My sisters, you have done the principal thing necessary to become saints. The least remains yet to be done. The same I say to you, you have, perhaps, done the chief part already. You have left your country, your home, your parents, your goods, and your amusements. 
the least remains yet to be done to become a saint. Do it. Prayer O my God, reject me not, as I deserve, for I will amend. I know well that so negligent a life as mine cannot satisfy thee. I know that I have myself, by my lukewarmness, shut the door against the graces which thou dost desire to bestow upon me. O Lord, do not yet abandon me, continue to be merciful towards me. I will rise from this miserable state. I will, for the future, be more careful to overcome my passions, to follow thy inspirations, and never will I through slothfulness omit my duties, but I will fulfill them with greater diligence. In a word, I will from this time forward do all that I can to please thee, and I will neglect nothing that I may know to be pleasing to thee. Since thou, O my Jesus, hast been so liberal with thy graces towards me, and hast deigned to give thy blood and thy life for me, there is no reason I should act with such reserve towards thee. Thou art worthy of all honor, all love, and to please thee one should gladly undergo every labor, every pain. But, O my Redeemer, thou knowest my weakness. Help me with thy powerful grace, in thee I confide. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Thou who hast helped me to leave the world, help me to overcome myself and to become a saint. Amen. Consideration 8. How dear to God is a soul that gives itself entirely to Him? God loves all those who love Him. I love them that love me. Proverbs eight seventeen. Many, however, give themselves to God, but preserve still in their hearts some attachment to creatures which prevents them from belonging entirely to God. How then shall God give himself entirely to him who, besides his God, loves creatures still? It is just that he should act with reserve towards those who act with reserve towards him. On the contrary, he gives himself entirely to those souls who, driving from their hearts everything that is not God and does not lead them to his love, and giving themselves to him without reserve, truly say to him, My God and my all. St. Teresa, as long as she entertained an inordinate affection, though not an impure one, could not hear from Jesus Christ what afterwards she heard, when, freeing herself from every attachment, she gave herself entirely to the divine love, namely, the Lord, saying to her, Now, because thou art all mine, I am all thine. Consider that the Son of God has already given himself entirely to us. A child is born to us, and a son is given to us. Isaiah 9, 6 He has given himself to us through the love he bears to us. He hath loved us, and hath delivered himself for us. Ephesians 5, 2 It is then just, says St. John Chrysostom, that when a God has given himself to you without reserve, he has given thee all nothing has he left to himself. You also should give yourself to God without reserve, and that always henceforth, burning with divine love, you should sing to him, Thine holy always will I be. Thou hast bestowed thyself on me. Holy, I give myself to thee. St. Teresa revealed to one of her nuns appearing to her after her death that God loves one soul who, as a spouse, gives herself entirely to him more than a thousand tepid and imperfect ones. From these generous souls, given entirely to God, is the choir of seraphim completed. The Lord himself says that he loves a soul who attends to her perfection so much that he seems not to love any other. One is my dove, my perfect one is but one. Canticles 6.8 Hence, blessed guiles, exhorted us, one for one, by which he wished to say that this one soul we have we should give wholly, not divided, to that one who alone deserves all love, on whom depends all our good, and who loves us more than all. Leave all, and you shall find all, says Thomas Akempis. Leave all for God, and in God you shall find all, O soul. 
concludes St. Bernard, be alone, that you may keep yourself for him alone. Keep yourself alone. Give no part of your affections to creatures, that you may belong only to him who alone deserves an infinite love, and whom alone you should love. Prayer My beloved to me, and I to him. Canticles 2.16 As then, O my God, Thou hast given Thyself entirely to me, I should be too ungrateful if I should not give myself entirely to Thee. Since Thou wouldst have me belong wholly to Thee, behold, O my Lord, I give myself entirely to Thee. Accept me through Thy mercy, disdain me not. Grant that this, my heart, which once loved creatures, may turn now wholly to thy infinite goodness. Let me henceforth die, said St. Teresa. Let another, then, myself live in me. Let God live in me, and give me life. Let him reign, and let me be his slave, for my soul wishes no other liberty. This my heart is too small, O God, most worthy of love, and it is too little able to love thee who art deserving of an infinite love. I should then commit against thee too great an injustice, should I still divide it by loving anything besides thee. I love thee, my God, above everything. I love only thee. I renounce all creatures and give myself entirely to thee, my Jesus, my Savior, my love, my all. I say and always will say, What have I in heaven and besides thee? What do I desire on earth? Thou art the God of my heart, and the God that is my portion forever. Psalm 72.26 I desire nothing, either in this life or in the next, but to possess the treasure of thy love. God of my heart, I am unwilling that creatures should have any more place in my heart. Thou alone must be its master. To thee alone shall it belong for the future. Thou alone shalt be my God, my repose, my desire, all my love. I say with St. Ignatius, Give me only thy love and thy grace, and I am rich enough. O most holy Virgin Mary, obtain for me this, that I may be faithful to God, and never recall the donation that I have made of myself to him. Amen. Consideration 9 one must have a great desire for becoming a saint. No saint has ever attained to sanctity without a great desire. As wings are necessary to birds in order to fly, so holy desires are necessary to the souls in order to advance in the road to perfection. To become saints, we must detach ourselves from creatures, conquer our passions, overcome ourselves, and love crosses. But to do all this, much strength is required, and we must suffer much. But what is the effect of holy desire? St. Lawrence Justinian answers us. It supplies strength and makes the pain easier to be borne. Hence the same saint adds that he is already vanquished who has a great desire of vanquishing. A great part of the victory is the desire of vanquishing. He who wishes to reach the top of a high mountain will never reach it if he has not a great desire to do so. This will give him courage and strength to undergo the fatigue of ascending. Otherwise, he will stop at the foot, wearied and discouraged. St. Bernard asserts that we acquire perfection in proportion to the desire for it which we preserve in our heart. And St. Teresa said that God loves generous souls that have great desires, for which reason the saint exhorted all in this way. Let our thoughts be high, for thence will come our good. We must not have low and little desires, but have that confidence in God, that if we make the proper efforts, we shall by little and little attain to that perfection which, with his grace, the saints have reached. In this way, the saints attained, in a short time, to a great degree of perfection, and were able to do great things for God. Being made perfect in a short time, he fulfilled a long time. Wisdom 4.13
Thus, St. Aloysius, Gonzaga, obtained, in a few years, he lived not over twenty-three years, to such a degree of sanctity, that St. Mary Magdalene Apazi, in an ecstasy, seeing him in heaven, said, it seemed to her, in a certain way, that there was no saint in heaven who enjoyed a greater glory than Aloysius. And she understood at the same time that he had arrived at so high a degree by the great desire he had cherished of being able to love God as much as he deserved, and that seeing this beyond his reach, the holy youth had suffered on earth a martyrdom of love. St. Bernard, being in religion, in order to excite his fervor, used to say to himself, Bernard, for what did you come here? I say the same to you. What have you come to do in the house of God? To become a saint? And what are you doing? Why do you lose the time? Tell me, do you desire to become a saint? If you do not, it is certain you never will become one. If, then, you have not this desire, ask Jesus Christ for it. Ask Mary for it. And if you have it, take courage, says St. Bernard, for many do not become saints, because they do not take courage. And so I repeat it. Let us take courage, and great courage. What do we fear? What inspires this diffidence in us? That Lord who has given us strength to leave the world will give us also the grace to embrace the life of a saint. Everything comes to an end. Our life, be it a contented or a discontented one, will always come to an end, but eternity will never terminate. Only that little we have done for God will console us in death and throughout eternity. The fatigue will be short. Eternal shall be the crown, which is already, so to speak, before our eyes. How satisfied are the saints now with all that they have suffered for God. If a sorrow could enter paradise, the blessed would be sorry for this alone, that they have neglected to do for God what they might have done more, but which now they are unable to do. Take courage, then, and be prompt, for there is no time to lose. What can be done today we may not be able to do tomorrow. St. Bernardin of Siena said that one moment of time is of as great a value as God himself, for at every moment we may gain God, his divine grace, and higher degree of merits. Prayer Behold, O my God, here I am. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. Psalm 56, 8 See, I am prepared to do all thou shalt require of me. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Acts of the Apostles 9, 6 Tell me, O Lord, what thou desirest of me. I will obey thee in all. I am sorry for having lost so much time in which I might have pleased thee, and yet have not done so. I thank thee that still thou givest me time to do so. Oh no, I will not lose any more time. I will and desire to become a saint, not to obtain from thee a greater glory and more delights. I will become a saint that I may love thee more, and to please thee in this life and in the next. Make me, O Lord, to love and please thee as much as thou desirest. Behold, this is all that I ask of thee, O my God. I will love thee, I will love thee, and in order to love thee, I offer myself to undergo every fatigue and to suffer every pain. O my Lord, increase in me always this desire and give me the grace to execute it. Of myself I can do nothing, but assisted by thee I can do all. Eternal Father, for the love of Jesus Christ, graciously hear. My Jesus, through the merits of thy passion, come to my succor. O Mary, my hope, for the love of Jesus Christ, protect me. Amen.